Hey, hello class. Today we're in uh, an orchard and we're going to do some top working on fruit trees. So you see a tree behind me that's completely leafed out. This is actually an Anna apple tree. It's not the best for our area. And so what we want to do is, um, because this tree leafs out so early, today is April 7th, because these trees leaf out so early, they have potential to be frozen pretty bad. This morning it was uh, pretty close to freezing, so this tree isn't the best variety. If we would have had another late frost, it's going to get wiped out. So we're going to change over or top work through grafting, and I'll show you what I have done, and I'll show you some more grafts. Das ist schwer zu ertragen, aber schön anzusehen, bitte weitergehen. Wir haben Marktversagen, das uns alle betrifft. Wir posten und bewerten von den Narren. Doch das gilt nicht für die, die die Struktur aufbauen, deren Sohn und Sein seht. Wir haben Marktversagen, da gibt es viele Fragen. Okay, this is what our, our tortured tree looks like after the grafting was done. I left uh, one, two, three, four, five, six main trunks here. Um, I took the tree down to just trunks and I've added the grafts. I did some uh, every two weeks starting in early March because uh, I didn't know timing wise which ones were the best to do but the ones I had done in early March I actually came back and cut some of those out to regraft because I was sure they weren't working but some of the ones I did on um, March 28th some of those are starting to sprout out so you see here's a bark graft and it's starting to leaf out so I know this one took here's some more this one's starting to leaf out uh, so I just cut this off flush I opened up a layer on the cambium I inserted my scion and these are starting to leaf out I got leafing out there leafing out here and so a lot of the ones I did in late March when this tree was already um, the sap was already flowing it, they were easy to work with those seem to take the best not a lot from earlier in March took and so there were some left here this is one I did a cleft graft so you can see the split and so I had the split and then I tapered you can see that split in the bark and I cut my scion wood tapered and I had that inserted here along the side for the cleft graft and not a lot of my cleft grafts took and that's probably because of um, me as an operator so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and recut this off and then I'm going to show you how to do some bark grafts and we can do a follow-up with those okay class this is a follow-up video to the the video that I've already showed you it was about why I decided to uh, graft over some of these trees that was last year when I did that grafting so one year later we're here today in the in the orchard and you can see the problem that I experienced today's uh, it was spring like um, it's the middle of February and uh, these these fruit trees are blooming out here now winter has come again uh, once the storm passes it's gonna freeze here and it's gonna freeze hard and all of these flowers are gonna drop and so these varieties here that you see um, some 
uh, in full bloom. These are Anna apples, and this whole row was actually Anna apples, and these are the two trees that I top worked last year. This is a Fuji apple, and it's as dormant as can be. This has a chance to wait for another month and then bloom out. The buds aren't even swelling yet. And so this is good. And you can see this whole line of trees um, is a higher winter chill variety. There's nothing coming out. Then you look here, these are golden dorsets and they're in full bloom. So I'm gonna start top working these as well because this variety is not good for this area. But getting back here to the trees that I worked uh, last year and showed you the video on, you can see these uh, cut ends here. You can see the varieties that I showed you. This is an Oshmed's uh, kernel, and that's taken, and this is how much growth I've gotten out of this from last year. What I learned on this is that leaving a nurse branch, this is a part of the old uh, Anna apple. I cut the top off, I cut these major stems off, but I left myself a nurse branch. And if you follow this nurse branch up, it's blooming. But if you follow these uh, varieties that I grafted on, if you follow those up, those buds aren't swelling. And the uh, size of diameter that I put on, these you saw the video, these were just small pieces that I attached. These stems will continue to lengthen and expand. And so um, here's an example of uh, Grimes. This was a bark graft. And this one has grown out pretty decent. Um, here's an example of, this is a cleft graft using uh, Brayburn. The Brayburn grew up and it kind of made this point here. Um, I have some Macintosh. I have some, uh, here's a Macintosh. I did a double bark graft, one here and one here. And you can see this one took and is uh, still dormant, where you can see right next to it is little stems from the Anna that came out that I'm going to come in here and work this. Uh, some of mine, like for instance, here's the cinnamon spice, both grafts, they took, but then they broke. I can see where they broke out of there. And what I learned was some of this vigorous growth, when you cut off a main stem like this, the, the graft wants to come out really fast. And so by leaving yourself a nurse branch um, for one season will help temper that enthusiasm on your, on your uh, grafts. You kind of want them to grow slow like this um, in that first season. Now I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna cut back, clean everything out, and all that's gonna be left is the grafts and we'll continue to evaluate when they start to bud out. I go over here, I left a larger nurse branch on this one. So this is all Anna here. Working my way down, you can see quite a large Anna that I left on. I tried to do some uh, some actual like bark grafts here. They didn't take very well. This one's still alive, um, but I don't expect much out of it. Plus, I'm going to take this off right here. Actually, I might take it off here and do a few more grafts this year onto onto this one. But for instance, here is a um, again. This was done last year. This is a Mutsu. So my Mutsu, if I unwrap this, you can see it took, here was the actual piece that I put on there. Here, from that point out, this grew. And that Mutsu is, and you can even see the different color of the wood. This is reddish compared to the, uh, the Anna, the golden color of the Anna apple. And then I have some cleanup to do because this branch that I'm holding here is a piece of the Anna that sprouted out from below here. So I'm looking for my grafts. I'm gonna clean these up. If I unwrap this, I'll show you what that connection looks like. Uh, I tried all different types of wrap to experiment. I'll expose that and show you. You can see the swelling of the graft in here. I'll, I'll get a better look when I clean it up. Here's a good one. Here's a good example. This is also a Mutsu. I tried a, I did a bark graft on this one. This one looks really nice. A few Annas popping out from the main Anna stem. You'll always have to watch that. But from this point up, this is all Mutsu. And so I'm gonna clean this up. The buds are holding tight as opposed to the Anna. The Annas are uh, flowering out. This is what we want for this area. So again, once I did this heavy pruning on here, a lot of suckers came up. Those suckers were very vigorous, 
and leaving these to temper that growth was really an important thing to do. One other graft on this tree that I did, um, here's a, a Granny Smith and here's an Oshmed's cleft. So the Granny Smith, um, oh the Granny Smith is here, that clearly did not take. Um, so this is just my old piece, you can see my old size of my scion. Uh, for some reason that one didn't take, but this Oshmed's here uh, it was a cleft graft. So you can see that coming out um, and it's holding dormant. And so we'll have a good framework on this tree after I clean it up. I'll probably leave one uh, some distance so we can regraft onto it this year, a couple different varieties to try out. So uh, two years ago, that's what this tree looked like. I cut it down to nothing. I showed you the video, it was pretty leafed out. Uh, two years later, we're to this. It still looks like a Frankenstein, but now all of this energy is gonna grow into these graphs. And the beauty is dormant, holding its own, staying dormant, flowered out, that tree is screwed. It is gonna freeze and it's gonna freeze hard. This is fine. That is not. What I'm gonna wanna do is this isn't gonna last very long uh, and I made a mistake uh, by not putting wire tags and boss tags on right away. I'll have to do that um, right now because I never want these marked ones. Uh, a couple years down the line, I might not be able to tell that this is graft or that this one is graft. And also a piece will come out from here and start growing out. It might be more vigorous than this piece and I might accidentally prune this piece out and, and not prune that piece out because I want to stick with this tree and as this gets bigger and bigger it'll suppress other suckers from coming up from the main Anna that we were trying to get rid of in the first place. So metal embossing tags uh, tagged right away. This was kind of an experiment so I wasn't sure how, how well I was going to do on this. But in the, in the case of this one, this uh, grafted tree, this Anna apple was originally grafted. So down there is the graft union and it's on a root stock. Now as I come up, this is all Anna, all the, the framework here. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, new graft trees coming out of the top. That could be a maintenance nightmare, but what I'm looking to do is watch these and evaluate when they butt out. Like for instance, this one, that's a um, Brayburn. Uh, this looks pretty good and dormant, but I see this corner of this Brayburn right there just starting to swell on that bud. And so that might be okay for this climate, but um, the longer it can stay dormant, the better. So evaluation of these, and it's not just when they come out, coming out is the most important thing or you'll never have fruit. But when fruit does come out of these, how do they pollinate? Uh, how do they taste? What's the shelf life? There's a whole, what's the crop load? There's a whole bunch of additional information that we can gain from these evaluations. Wow, you can really see where I wrapped this one. It's really pinched off there. This connection feels strong because this was a cleft graft. So I split all the way through and inserted this little piece of scion. But man, it's all everywhere where it's shrunk down is where I had the band wrapped too tight. So it's really pinched off. It'll be interesting to see what happens um, here. This is the cleft of one single Oshmed's kernel. Here is the... Uh, here is a nice cleft graft exposed. There's that classic uh, wedge shape. You can see it, it would be all the way through on both sides. Uh, this is a cleft of the wine sap. And so that's a really nice, um, really nice top there. I like that one. 
Uh, here is one that's a Brayburn. It's got a cleft, but it was pinched down a little bit in here with the taping. So really I should have taken this off in the, uh, maybe in the summer after I knew that these had taken. Um, you can even see the discoloration. I told you this is red, a redder stem on the uh, Brayburn. Um, and then the Anna is more golden. I can see a little sliver of red down in here that made sure that I made that connection. But then the swollen piece right up here was just above the wrap. So if I would have unwrapped it earlier, this swollen piece, this whole thing would have swelled instead of being just cinched down here and then not above. So I'm learning, I'm figuring things out, and we'll see how these uh, react. 